Welcome to the second part of our series about setting up print files for direct-to-garment printing. DTG is the method that print-on-demand companies like Merch by Amazon use to print on their t-shirts. Last week we talked about image size and resolution, so if you have not seen this video yet, I'll link it in the description below. This week we'll try to answer another question that we get all the time. Do you have to create your design in RGB or CMYK? And which profile do you have to use for DTG printing? And if you have any suggestions or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. Hi everyone, Everson here from DTG Merch, where we talk about everything you need to know to run a successful t-shirt business. We normally post very helpful content and videos about t-shirt design, print on demand and direct to garment printing. Let's look at the requirements of print on demand platforms that work with direct to garment printing. Here I am on the resources page of Merch by Amazon. At the very top we see the sentence Create your final artwork in RGB. This will produce a greater range of colors when printed on the different products. And below they write that we need to upload a file in the PNG file format. Now let's have a look at the requirements of Spreadshirt. As we can see here, they give us a few more file types to choose from PNG, JPEG, PMP and GIF. But below they write, although we accept several file formats, we recommend you create your designs in PNG format. But there is no information if we have to use CMYK or RGB. It's a bit mysterious, huh? Let's move on to Redbubble. Here you can find a little bit of information about this topic. If you create your new designs in CMYK, there should be no dramatic shifts when you export your designs are PNG, which can only be RGB. And then back to CMYK during the physical printing process. Wow, that's a lot of converting. What's happening here? As we can see, all the print companies ask us to deliver the design files as PNG. And PNG files can only be in RGB, they do not support CMYK. So it's no wonder that so many people get confused. It is common knowledge that you have to use a CMYK profile to print your art. And for designs that you view on a screen, like graphics for websites, you need to use RGB. Everybody knows that, so why they are asking for PNG files? Let's find out. One of the reasons that uh, print-on-demand platforms are asking for PNG files is that they are extremely easy to use. They can handle transparencies and the design is reduced to a single layer generated rather small file sizes. It doesn't matter where you open the files, they will always look the same which is, for example, not the case when you work with TIFF or PSD files. They can be interpreted differently by programs. For example, the transparency layers get missing, or one of the layers could be turned on or off by mistake. Other file formats are much more prone to errors, but PNG files are always in RGB. Before we dive into this, I would like to take a moment and talk about the differences between RGB and CMYK very quickly. We will not go too deep into the technical differences between the two because there are already many resources that can explain this at great detail. But a little overview helps with the understanding. First, let's have a look at RGB. When your monitor is off, the screen is black. When you turn it on, lots of tiny lights light up in red, green and blue. These lights create the colors. If all of them are on at the same time, the screen is white. 
with CMYK and printing, things are the other way around. Before you start printing, the paper is white. Then you begin to add drops of inks in cyan, magenta and yellow. And those ink drops create all the colors. If you mix cyan, magenta and yellow, you get a dark brownish color. To make a dark black, they added additional black ink. In case you are wondering what the K in CMYK stands for, the black ink is called key. But it's essential to understand that RGB and CMYK are color models, not color profiles. And a color model is not as the same as a color profile. A color model is a mathematical method to transform colors into numbers. RGB and CMYK are color models and yes, there are more color models. Another important one is the C-Lab model, which tries to recreate the number of colors our human eye can see. It is also used to convert CMYK to RGB, but this will be too much for this video. A color space is a specific use case of a color model. For example, you have color spaces like sRGB or Adobe RGB. A color profile, on the other hand, is specific to a specific device. For example, the way your printer, monitor or camera defines the color. And also, which colors they can reproduce. The amount of colors a specific equipment can reproduce is called the gamut. Most CMYK profiles have been created for commercial paper printing, but that has almost nothing in common with uh, printing on textiles. They are both printers, yes, but that's how far the similarities go. Let's have a look at paper printing first. To receive correct colors in paper printing, they invested years in optimizing everything. Thanks to this, they get repeatable results. And they are able to predict the outcome. They print on white substrates only and the paper is produced in a specific way, so the outcome will always be the same. The inks are standardized, the processes are standardized, they also create their printer profiles for each printer paper combination. They know which colors their printer can produce on that paper, they know the printable colors of that printer, and with that they also create profiles that designers can use to preview and check the outcome. To sum up, everything is optimized to receive a consistent, predictable output. Their color management is at a very high level. With direct-to-garment printing, the situation cannot be more different. DTG is a new technology and we need to figure out quite a lot of things. There are four main reasons for this. Reason number one is the substrate. Instead of printing paper on a consistent quality, we print on fabric. And there is a huge variety of different materials. We have to deal with lots of different natural fibers. These have been dyed with various chemicals and added finishings like silicone coating. That silicone coating makes the t-shirt softer, but at the same time it can influence the colors when printed. Every manufacturer of t-shirts can do as they please, there is no standard. Because of these differences, colors will look different from a t-shirt of brand A when compared to a t-shirt from a brand B, for example. Also, because of difference in the natural fibers, even prints in the t-shirts from the same brand may look slightly different. Reason number two, there are lots of colors available. It's not like on paper printing that you mostly print on a white paper. T-shirt comes in no types of colors, which brings us to one particular thing that DTG printing has, which is also reason number three. The white ink. CMYK inks can only print on white background. If you draw with a watercolor on black paper, you would not see very much. 
with the white ink's help, we create our white background on a dark or colored t-shirt. And on top of that white background, we print the colors. By the way, if you want to learn more about this, check out our online course about direct-to-garment printing. There, we talk about the different factors that can influence the final outcome of your print. I'll put the link in the description below. And last but not least, reason number four, color management is non-existent. Last year, we went to the ICC Color Expert Day and there was a common frustration about the lack of color management in DTG printing. In the rare case that your print shop created a printer profile for every single product in every color, they know the colors that their printer can print. But, more often than not, this is not the case and they use generic profiles. For example, one for white t-shirts, another for black t-shirt, doesn't matter which uh, composition or which t-shirt brand. As you can imagine, there will be some variations in the outcome. And uh, what's even worse, in our opinion, is that there are no profile available for the designers. So we do not know which colors we can use. We don't know which colors the printer reproduces and we cannot prove your colors like you could do if you were printing on paper. So yes, it's frustrating, but color shifts are normal with direct-to-garment printing. Why not design in CMYK? Because it will limit your colors. Nobody knows the exact gamut of DTG, but most likely it's larger than CMYK. Many printers add additional inks like orange and green, and don't forget about the t-shirt colors. That you need to design in CMYK is true for paper printing. In that case, you know the gamut and you can prove colors. As we saw, Redbubble recommends designing in CMYK, then change to RGB so you can upload in a PNG and then they will transform it back to CMYK. I would assume this is to avoid too substantial color changes, but it will do your overall colors even though they would be printable. We recommend you create your designs in RGB. Just be a little bit clever about which colors you use. For example, stay away from neon colors. No printer will be able to reproduce that neon green. But the printers will always print the closest match. Well, if they have been profiled. So, design in RGB and expect some color changes. But another thing that we should not forget, if you are dealing with color changes, ask yourself if you are even in the position to judge color correctly. Usually you will need a calibrated monitor in a suitable environment, you will need to know the correct profile, then you need a profiled printer that has been calibrated to this combination of substrate, ink set, pretreatment amount, and so on. And to judge the final result, you would need standardized viewing condition, for example, a dark room with norm lights, and I doubt that most of us have that set up in place. So, if we could design with the correct profile, the chances are high that the colors will look different anyway. We recommend that you ask your printer for requirements. If he asks you to use a specific profile, use that. But if they ask for PNG files, expect that there is not too much color management happening. Design in RGB and put a little thought in the colors you use. So, now you know a little bit more about the difference between RGB and CMYK. In the next episode of the series, we will talk about the design elements you can use. If you don't want to miss the next episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And, as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. That's it for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.